In this video, I toured a gorgeous self-built ProMaster with a unique and ingenious folding table design. This van features a fixed platform bed, a great kitchen with a two burner propane stove, a composting toilet, a folding toolbox on slides, and a dinette to guest bed conversion Caroline invented herself. And a quick reminder, if you like this video, it really helps others find it if you hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications. I'm Caroline Parks and my van's name is Wings. She is a uh, 2019 ProMaster, 159 inch wheelbase, high top. When I bought her at the beginning of 2020, she was nothing but sheet metal. Built the van with my brother and my, and my carpenter friend. You wanna come in and see? So both of my seats are on swivels, uh, which we installed ourselves. Um, I don't swivel the passenger seat unless I have extra people in the van because there's a lot of stuff stored there. Um, when we put the swivel seats in, you know, the ProMaster has this step on the, at the floor for the cab. And once you put the swivel seat in, which raised the seat about two inches, your feet just dangle on the floor. So um, we built this box here, which when, I initially, when we initially built it, I was calling it a shoe box, but it was really a pain in the neck to get into. So it's just storage now. Um, and the shoes live somewhere else. Which I think is something that happens when you live in your van full time. You start out thinking you're gonna do things one way and then it changes. The seat covers the composting toilet and this lifts up. And that's an airhead composting toilet, which I absolutely love. Most of the time I spend sitting in that chair and looking out the window. But if I want to have I, I could have someone else sleep in, in the van with me when I set this table down, but they're sleeping on top of the toilet, which is not really the best idea. So generally, if, I, if I'm staying somewhere for a few days and I want to be able to just lounge, I'll put the table down and be able to just stretch out. But then I don't have a table. So, you know, there's the trade-offs of living in 72 square feet. We had to really think about how to make the table go up and down. I said my van's name is Wings, but during construction, her name was the van of unintended consequences. <laughs> because I would do something and then go on to the next thing that I wanted to do and go, oh, I can't do that the way I thought I was gonna do it. <laughs> I have to come up with something different. This was one of those situations. The table was practically the last thing I built and it took me and my brother probably three or four weeks of brainstorming at dinner to come up with a way to do it. I hadn't put the marmoleum on the floor and that added an extra quarter inch. So all of my measurements were messed up when I finally figured out what I was gonna do. So I had to, I had to rework it at that point. I couldn't put one of the traditional um, RV table mounts in because then I couldn't open up my shoebox. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't, I wasn't sure whether the table, would, whether there would be room outside the shoebox to do that. Um, given I wanted, I didn't want the table to stick too out far out in the aisle and things like that. So I came up with a hinged system. <laughs> The 
this is great for shade. It's basically just a piece of um, cotton flannel with grommets in the hem and I screwed cup hooks into the headliner and I have to be very careful with putting it up on the cup hooks because they will come out eventually. So I'm still trying to figure out the right way to attach it. But it's really nice because if I'm parked somewhere where say the road is coming from over there but there's woods over there, I can shade myself, I can shield myself from people coming down the road, but I still have a view. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people like to minimize windows for heat retention or for stealth camping or things like that. But really for me, my intention is to be able to see out, um, especially if I'm someplace in the winter where I'm just sitting inside where I have a heat, a, a heat source and I can watch the birds and the river and the ocean, whatever. I have windows all mm -hmm. the way around. I like to have a lot of options. This, this window shade is something my carpenter friend and I dreamed up. It actually is a, is a top down, bottom up shade. I can, I can put it up like this and have my vent windows open at the bottom. This one? Yeah, thank you. But I can have privacy up at the top without an expensive top down bottom up shade. Mm -hmm. This is the built-in shelf with the 2019 ProMaster. It came with my van and most of it, most of what I put up here is stuff I don't get to very often, except for the front curtains. Uh, I have a blanket that I go up, put up here and then I have my binoculars, which are always at hand. And if I'm driving, they're on the front seat, but they're always right there, so. And my bookshelves. I know that uh, a lot of van lifers don't get to carry very, very many books, but this is a significant downsizing in books for me. So I really had to have my field guides, a couple of little special things from, from my sticks and bricks life. My flying pig needs to be with me all the time. This cabinet holds my art supplies, painting and drawing stuff and glues and things like that. And more books and I work with polymer clay. I make little ring bowls and they all live in here. So. And I have a few special things that I've collected along the way. I don't do a lot of collecting because there's not a lot of room. You know, I used to pick up rocks and, you know, parts of trees and things like that. But I have to be really careful about that as we all do. So something that doesn't take up a lot of space like this, this piece of, um, of moss came from the redwoods just north of San Francisco. My stove is propane. I have a sealed propane locker right underneath this that's vented to the outside. So this is my propane locker. And this whole thing was a combination of my brother and my carpenter friend. We all worked together to figure this thing out. Um, so this is sealed with um, neoprene. So nothing's getting out through the door. There's a, a vent that drains down out to the outside. And this tube up here is so that um, air can come back in from the outside if, if propane is draining to the outside. So um, in theory, any propane leak in here just goes right to the outside. And it's strapped down tight so it doesn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I do keep, I have a, a Coleman stove in the back and I keep an extra um, propane bottle here. So. Okay. I really love this little stove here and I have I often take a picture of my kitchen window in the morning. I have a sink. I have a 22 gallon um, tank in the back, water tank that wraps around my wheel well. So that's space saving and gives me lots of flexibility. I have my Berkey filter, which I actually learned about from you, Joni. So <laughs> that's, that's actually one of the very first things I bought before I even thought about having a van was I have the Berkey. Mm -hmm. um, and I pull it from up above here that's and I just, you know, I, I don't have one of the the hoses, but I just pour it into a, into a bowl and fill it up there. And then I have um, 
oils and vinegars and tamari and teas and things like that up there. So another benefit of having a professional cabinet maker help me build my van um, was that he knew how to do things and he knew about the components you could get. And he came up with these really wonderful beefy cabinet latches. So um, this and then this that has the little uh, little balls in it and you can adjust the tension of those balls. Um, and once it's in there, it's in there. Mm -hmm. it, it, and all of my all of my cabinet doors have those latches on them and they do not come open at all. I have two 12 volt service panels and one of them's up here and the other one's over there. And this is a good place to mention that when my brother agreed to help me build the van, his um, response was, I will be happy to help you, but you need to know everything about that van so that you can fix it when you need to. And I, I did end up doing all of the 12 volt wiring in the van. And I have actually had to mess with it a couple of times since I've been on the road. So I'm really grateful for that. I also did all the plumbing. He did the propane plumbing, but I did the water plumbing. I put in the water pump and everything. And I've also had to work with that since I've been on the road. So it has worked out really well. I'm one of those out of sight, out of mind people. So if something's in a drawer or behind a door, I'll forget I have it. This really helps me to be able to actually keep track of the things that I have and use. I have a kitchen drawer. This has some utensils. It has towels and plastic bags and things. Um, and we put this little piece of plywood on. There's a, there's a heat shield underneath the stove, but even so, things were getting just a little warm. So this, not very, not enough to really worry about, but this keeps everything protected. Um, that was one of the joys of having someone who had all the right tools and knew how to measure things and put them in the right places. So this little cabinet here is just in front of the propane locker, so it's only like three inches deep. Um, but I've managed to find things that go in there. This is a good traditional undersink, you know, pop out, and it just holds junk, um, cleaning junk. Mm -hmm. This is my kitchen cabinet. This is my, my pots and pans. So this is one of those serendipity things. Um, my Propex heater is underneath there. So the, the furnace itself is underneath. Um, the the uh, vent goes over there to underneath the, um, the other cabinet. And then I put a shelf on top of the Propex. I didn't know what to do with this space and it turned out that these Alpha um, shelves with drawers fit absolutely perfectly. I mean, the, the, the depth from front to back was exactly what I needed here. I have a few, a little spice rack up here. Um, you know, using every little bit of space efficiently. Over here is my desk drawer. Pens and pencils. They're positive closing drawers and they and they close pretty well, but going around a curve the wrong way, they'll pop out. So I've got these little square hook screws and I just turn them up when I'm driving to hold everything in. So that's the, the desk drawer. This is my bathroom drawer. It's got all my toiletries in it. This is both my step to get into my bed and part of my pantry. Over here is my truck fridge 78, which fit perfectly under this cabinet and into the space. And this started out being, it had, it had a hanger rod in it. It was gonna be my closet, but it didn't really work for that. It was hard to get to. So now it is storage and this is more pantry. This is a cabinet that goes two feet back under the bed, just this wide and other than you can see there's a few more spices and a little bit of food in there. Mostly this is all of my polymer clay um, tools and clay and um, things that I need for, the, for doing that work. This is my bedside table. There's space for books underneath it. And then, you know, my phone goes here at night. That's what my, what my clock is. Um, this is, I have to show this off. My nephew found this for me for Christmas. And this is where my glasses go at night. <laughs> I just think it's the most adorable thing. <laughs> and the bed 
is high enough that everything fits underneath it. And um, one of the most important things to me, one of the things I wanted most when I first started planning the van was to have a skylight over the bed. And that's um, a turn overlander, Arctic turn skylight. And I really love it. It's, mm -hmm. it's, I have stars and moon over the bed. Um, sometimes I have rain. It's, it's really wonderful. But it was a little scary, um, cutting holes in the van. <laughs> but we did it all ourselves. It was really nice. I have a couple of fruit hammocks. I, I have one fruit hammock and I have another hammock that holds other stuff and leaves enough room for my feet underneath and between them. <laughs> um, but I really, that was, that's really helped. I really didn't have any other place else for my fruit. This is one of those things that was basically uh, not professionally done. But I was I was stacking stuff up there. It was always falling off. And I thought, I'm just going to put something in there and figure out how to make it better eventually. So it works. This is just pantry storage. Mm -hmm. And this is more books and notebooks and extra things. And more books and notebooks and extra things. <laughs> Um, and this is clothes, some of which are not in there. And I'm still working out how to store clothing. I'm sort of still in between winter and summer, but I have some stuff in packing cubes back there that I, you know, don't get to very often. And eventually I'll take them out and realize I don't really need them and I'll pass them on. Mm -hmm. And I have my grape ivy in the back. <laughs> yeah, I figured this is home. Yeah. I would have plants at home, so... I have a great five And my hanging clothes back there. Yeah, I took them out of this cabinet and hung them back there. And it works much better. They're, that space is really, it's not, it's not like they're in the way of anything. Yeah, I didn't do this. The walls of the van are all um, tongue and groove pine. That is secured to the frame of the van. The rest of the construction is screwed to the tongue and groove. Now this, the bed um, has a, a support underneath here that is screwed into the frame also. It went right through the tongue and groove and into the frame. So that's really solid. This was another advantage to having someone who knows wood and knows construction work on this. They figured out that we could use, I think, two by sixes. On this side I have, this is my uh, Victron inverter. I'm not going to pull it out and show you, but there's a shelf in the back over the wheel where my two batteries are. And also all of my solar controllers and, and all of my my big wiring is back there. It's just on the other side of the inverter. And it's all um, a little makeshift covered up with, with pieces of coroplast just to make sure that I don't bump into them. This is my 22 gallon water tank and I can fill it from a hose or I can pour from a gallon bottle into it if I need to, which I have once or mm -hmm. twice. This is one of my very favorite things. Um, my brother had an idea to build toolboxes and put them on the slider. So this is all my hand tools. I have to pull things out to get to the other one, but that's got all my power tools. It's got a jigsaw and a sander and uh, the drill. Well, I have the ladder out here, which goes to the roof. And that lives on this shelf right here. And I also have a little step ladder because the roof rack that my brother built for me has some clips on it and I can, I, I made my own awning because I sew everything that I need. Um, I clip a tent pole to the clips on the roof rack and, and stake it out. But I need a little step ladder to do that. So I carry that with me. It's funny the things that, you know, we decide we really need mm -hmm. and have to make space for. I have a folding rocking chair that goes back here. Um, uh, yoga mat, awning stuff, more tools. If I need to plug in to somebody's house, I use this cord. Um, this is just a really nice thing. If, if, I, if I've got my polymer clay set up outside, I can plug all of my tools into this and then it goes and gets out of the way. So this is also a slider. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pull it out right now, but I have a whole bunch of stuff back there. The thing is that that cabinet that my polymer clay tools are in means that the space between it and the tires 
is really narrow. Mm -hmm. So the sliders are, are essential. Mm -hmm. Caroline built an incredible van for herself with the help of her brother and friend. And that dinette conversion is so cool. If you liked this video, please share it. And if you'd like to see more van and rig tours, van life tips, and other information to help women get on the road, hit subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. If you're a woman who would like to join in deeper conversation, join our Facebook group, Gal Adventurers, where I organize our weekly Nomadic Women's Virtual Happy Hour every Thursdays at 5 p.m. Pacific. This is Joni with the Galavan. Enjoy your journey. Mm -hmm.